Welcome back to The Chem Doctor and this video is going to focus on using mass spectrometry to determine the mass of an organic uh, molecule. Now, you will need to see the previous two videos uh, that I've produced on the mass spec spectrometer. The first one deals with uh, the, the application, the instrument, and how it works. The second video uh, shows you how you can utilize this technology to determine the mass of an element and the mass of a mixture of isotopes. In this particular video, what we are going to do is start at the beginning on how this instrument is used to, to determine the mass of a molecule. And we're going to start with a simple molecule. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to explain how the instrument is used to, to determine the mass of methane. Uh, now, the chemical formula for methane is shown here. And uh, I think to help understand this, um, I'm going to quickly draw the Lewis formula so that we can see uh, each of the four bonds in this. We're dealing with a molecule that is relatively simple. I will produce other videos where we can extend the sophistication from this one to molecules that have multiple carbon-carbon bonds. For now, we're going to start with something that's easy. So remember, um, this is going to, we're, what we're going to do is determine the mass of this molecule, and the mass of methane is 16 because the atomic mass of carbon is 12. And then, uh, and this is sort of back of the napkin. Uh, so I'm not going to use any significant figures. The mass, so we're just going to call the mass of carbon 12. And since there are four hydrogens and each hydrogen is worth one, then the mass of this molecule is going to be 16 total. All right, so let's see how this is going to work. Remember that methane is a gas. And so it can be injected directly into the instrument in this form. We don't have to worry about uh, converting this particular substance from either a solid or a liquid into the gas phase. So this particular molecule is very simple. It's, it's just injected into the instrument. It will come in as a, as a hot gas and be streamed along a hallway or through a tube. All right, and remember in my other explanations, the material is going to be exposed to an electron beam, which you can think of being as uh, atomic bullets. These atomic bullets are going to cause the loss of a, at least one electron, forming what we call a uh, molecular ion, because this is a molecule. And as soon as we ionize it, it's going to be a molecular ion. All right. and that molecular ion will be accelerated down the hallway here because the interior of the instrument, the interior of this hallway, has a positive voltage. And remember that like particles repulse one another. So the molecular ion will be accelerated down the hallway. When it hits this magnetic field here, the magnetic field is set up to literally um, repulse the molecular ion, and that repulsion in, uh, results in a deflection, which I, sh I show here. So the hallway is actually curved. The volt, or excuse me, the, mole the, um, the magnetic field is manipulated so that the molecular ion will collide with the detector uh, in the proper location. Remember that the detector uh, provides electrons to neutralize the molecular ion. And because we have the movement of electrons, we have the generation of an electrical current, which is proportional to the number of particles that are hitting the plate. So two pieces of information that we get out of the mass spec. We get the mass of the particle. And secondly, we can count particles. So we're going to know the number of particles of given mass in a mixture of particles that get injected into the instrument. All right, now, let's take a moment to think about what types of ions we're going to get out of the methane, all right? The first type is going to be CH4+, plus, where we've lost an electron. But we have something that is going to be molar mass of 16, 
but with a positive charge on it. We can also break bonds. So the next possible molecule or molecular ion will be one where we've lost one of the hydrogens and the, the particle itself will still have a positive charge on it because we've also lost some electrons. So this is going to be a molecular ion that will be molar mass of 15. The next possibility is going to be this one, which will be a molar mass of 14. Right? The next possibility is going to be this one, which will be a molar mass of 13. And then finally the last one is going to be this particular uh, ion, which is now an atomic ion, which will have a molar mass of 12. Remember that the instrument will have been calibrated before doing the experiment, most likely using C12. Remember what this allows you to do then is to tie a magnetic field that is going to be doing deflection to a mass. That's how we get to number one. And then when the particle hits the plate and it's neutralized, we have the movement of electrons which causes the, move, which causes the generation of an electrical current and therefore we can count particles. All right, so these are going to be the possible molecular ions that, that will be uh, detected in the instrument. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what the data is actually going to look at, like. So we're going to get a scan that's going to look like this. The vertical axis is going to be labeled as either percent relative abundance or percent relative intensity. All right, now, this is a histogram, and the, the literal tallness of each peak is proportional to the amount of that particle that was detected on the plate. So this is, and uh, in the second video that I produced, I showed the viewer how to actually do the calculation to figure out what the, to what the real percent abundance of each of these ions were. In this presentation, I'm not going to do that here. So you may want to review that, but please don't confuse this the vertical axis, how it's labeled here, with the actual percent in terms of numbers of each of these particles in the mixture. All right. Remember, the tallness of the peak rep represents that proportionality, but if we actually wanted to know the real percentage we would actually need to do the calculation. So now let's take a look and analyze this. Remember that the horizontal axis is going to be the mass to charge ratio, where we're looking at ions here that, that all are only carrying a plus one charge on them. Right? Notice that the largest peak is out here at 16. So this peak here represents, this, this is the largest mass to charge ratio that we have. In the, in the more sophisticated uh, um, data that we look at for bigger molecules, a lot of times this peak is going to be the smallest one because with large molecules they literally can be they literally are going to be blasted apart. So anytime you look at one of these scans and you're wanting to determine all right what is the molar mass of the unknown molecule that we have analyzed by this technique, you're going to look for the molar mass peak, which is out here at the largest position. Don't expect it to be the largest. It happens to be for methane because this molecule is so simple. Um, it, it really can't be blasted apart into significantly smaller particles because the only uh, covalent bonds that can be broken here are going to be carbon-hydrogen bonds. So this peak here is going to be our CH4 plus peak. All right, the next one in will be where we've lost literally one gram per mole of particle. So this is going to be your CH3 plus peak. The next one in at 14 is going to be this guy. And I'm going to write it like this because in, in the subsequent videos that I do, this linkage is going to be pretty important for you to find because in bigger molecules, they tend to lose these fragments in CH2 uh, type fragments. So 
This peak right here correlates to the 14 molecular ion. 12 plus 2 is 14. This guy will be this one. Whoops, excuse me. This one. And then finally, we're going to have the C12 peak right here. And this is going to be the one where all the hydrogens have been lost. All right, so this represents the mass spectrum of, of methane. And you can see that this, the largest molecular ion peak that we find in the scan represents the molar mass of the original compound. And that's what you're going to look for in, in subsequent data that, that we analyze. But remember what I said, more than likely that peak is going to be significantly smaller because in bigger molecules, just to give you an example, I'll, I'll, I'll put this up before we close. If we were looking at pro, propane as an example, as this thing travels through the instrument, when it hits that electron beam, beam a lot of this, the majority of this is probably going to get blasted apart. So you're going to expect to only to find a very small peak for, for the, the largest molar mass of the particular particle. Just keep that in mind as we go forward. All right, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the video.